Hey up. So we're looking at a big one today. Finally getting to talk about Cannibal Holocaust, a 1980s Italian cannibal exploitation film directed by Ruggiero Diodato, who is a name you may remember because I covered The House at the Edge of the Park, which is a film that he directed, in my Vipco reviews. One of the most controversial films of all time, and the poster child for video nasties. This film has been banned and butchered all over the world since its release. Will it hold up? Will it still be as controversial? Or will it be a bit of a disappointment? Let's find out, shall we? What about you, Alan? Well, there's only one thing that scares me. And that's marriage. <laughs> <laughs> He'd take me to the North Pole to put it off. Oh, I'd say he succeeded this time, too. A film of two halves, of sorts. A documentary crew have head out to a jungle known as the Green Inferno to make a film about the tribe there, but they've gone missing. So an anthropologist and his team head out to find out what happened to them. After the expedition, they find the tapes of the crew and we get to see how they met their fate. Was it a crazed cannibal tribe? Or did they have it coming because they're all a bunch of arseholes? You could probably guess which one. Shot in the jungles, at times this film can be quite beautifully made, but most of the time it's grotty, filthy, and makes you feel dirty watching it. As it should though, that is exactly what it sets out to do, and it exceeds in this thoroughly. It is still today one of the best examples, in my opinion, of the uh, Italian exploitation genre. But it's not without its issues, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Also, I do apologise in advance, Uh, there's not going to be many clips in this review, uh, mainly just because this film can get quite extreme at times, and there is a ton of nudity. This film is a little conflicting. Let's start with the good. The gore is excellent, some really nice effects in there, really effective. It's really nicely shot, some great camera work and some beautiful scenery. The plot does something a little different. Most of these films usually have the structure of find the tribe, live with the tribe, get captured by the tribe, kill the tribe. But this does something a little different. And there's also some underlying themes of how the West exploits other countries for entertainment, which is all quite interesting. The acting is pretty damn good here as well, which is surprising for this sort of film. And this is all accompanied by a beautiful soundtrack composed by Riz Ortolani. Fantastic. The bad, though, is very bad, unfortunately. And I think most of you out there probably know where my disappointment lies with this film. The animal cruelty is disgusting, barely watchable, and gratuitous. You don't need to show your characters actually killing a live turtle. Too far, there are other ways to do this. They show people getting killed all the time in this film, and they don't actually kill anyone. You want your characters to kill a turtle to show how, how horrible they are? Get a fake turtle, it's that easy. These scenes are inexcusable. Now for this review, I watched the uncut version. Well, I think there might be a little bit cut here and there, but you're talking seconds. Uh, it's pretty intact, and as someone who grew up with the 86 minute long Vipco version, that's fantastic, 10 whole minutes extra. Unfortunately, most of the stuff that's added in is the animal cruelty stuff. There's the castration scene, which is quite famous, which I was always interested in watching, but it is the animal cruelty stuff. Now luckily, on the Blu-ray, there is a edited version, a director's cut. Diodato's gone in and got rid of most of the horrible animal cruelty bits, 
and it's still a whole eight minutes longer than the Vipco version. Diodato has said in interviews that he regrets doing the animal cruelty scenes, uh, but due to pressure from producers he was forced to add them in. And if he was to remake the film these days, or was to make it nowadays, uh, he wouldn't add those bits in. Which is commendable if true. This material burned. All of it. Yep. This is just a quick little aside, so I can gush more than anything. I already said how good the soundtrack is, but I really mean the soundtrack is excellent. Uh, I even have it on vinyl. This is the Mondo release with the green inferno coloured vinyl, and it is excellent. It's beautiful. Even away from the film, I would I would highly recommend it. Um, with the film though, it's fantastic. It's such a weird juxtaposition. You get this wistful or grand music playing in these horrible scenes of people getting raped, mutilated. It's so strange, but it just works so well. If you haven't listened to the music outside of the film, I'd highly recommend checking it out. Or even if you just like soundtracks in general, Definitely seek it out, it is well worth your time. My son, my son was a son of a bitch, and he was no good. That's it, my son is dead. I don't want to talk about him no more. Now leave me alone. Such authenticity. I don't know. I don't think exceptional is the right word. You don't? No. I mean, what's exceptional about a primitive trial? Time for a little history lesson, for those of you who aren't fully in the know. In some regards, the history of this film is actually more interesting than the film itself. So ten days after the first screening of this film in Milan, Diodato was uh, taken to court over obscenity. Then a little while later, a French magazine started the rumour that people were actually killed on set during this film. So Diodato was slapped with a murder charge. He had to bring the actors into court and he had to reenact certain effects just to prove that he'd not made a snuff movie. And all the charges were dropped. Allegedly, this film was banned in over 50 countries, and that's what they used in the marketing of this film when it was later released. In the UK, it was banned for a time until Vipco released it, heavily cut, in the 80s. And as far as I'm aware, now take this with a pinch of salt, because all I could find was reports from 2006 but this film may still be banned in New Zealand and Iceland. If it's not, please correct me. I'd love to know if it's still banned anywhere. print for this Blu-ray is fantastic, not a single complaint, it's crisp, it looks amazing, it sounds good. Uh, as I said earlier, not sure if it's fully uncut, there might be a few seconds trimmed here and there, but compared to the Vipco version, it's incredible. Not hard really, is it? I'll show you some comparisons in the clips coming up. On the disc, outside of the two versions of the film, we get the usual fare. A ton of trailers, we get an interview with uh, Ruggiero Diodato and the actor Gabriel York, and we also get a little reappraisal from some film critics. A lot of good stuff, well worth checking out. And now for the case. All the information is really good, reads well and really sells the film. Now, we've got two versions of this film on the disc and only one runtime. And guess what? The runtime doesn't match either version. 
It's four minutes short on the full cut and three for the director's cut. They really can't seem to get the run times right, can they? Uh, we also get the reversible case again. Once again though, I do prefer this version right here. And the menu this time is a little cluttered. They usually do pretty well with menus, but this time when it popped up, I sort of went, what the hell am I looking at here? But it works, it's fine. Overall then, this really holds up. And it's a fantastic time capsule to the excess of the exploitation films of the 70s and 80s, with a little bit of substance in there. The gore is revolting and grimy, and it really got a response out of me. I'd highly recommend this film and this release, but that comes with a little asterisk. If I were you, I would watch the director's cut, because the animal violence, the animal cruelty is just far too extreme and gratuitous. It's not worth your time to watch, really. I probably don't need to say this. It's about one of the most controversially disgusting films of all time, but if you're squeamish, don't watch Cannibal Holocaust. Who'd have thought, eh? Now, before you put it in the comments, I am well aware that 88 Films have put out a 4K version, and I'm pretty sure that it's uncut. Now, I'm sure 88 Films have done a fantastic job with the restoration, I'm sure it looks great. But if you want a cheaper option, you can't go wrong with this release either. Sorry, I bopped the mic with it. You can't go wrong with this release either. It's pretty damn good. So there we have it. Cannibal Holocaust. Disgust, finally. I've been wanting to talk about this film for a very long time. And next episode, we've got another good film lined up. One that I've been looking forward to for a while anyway. I've not actually seen it yet. We're going to be going a little bit giallo to cleanse the palate from all this disgusting cannibal stuff. We're going to be watching Dario Argento's Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Wordy. Mm -hmm.